Hello 3D printing friends! Today on the BB3D channel I'm going to show you how to use Prusa Slicer to program filament swaps so you can do multicolor or multi-material prints like this on just about any 3D printer. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BV3D. Hi, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about cool 3D printer upgrades, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we're going to learn how to use Prusa Slicer's built-in ability to easily program filament swaps so you can change filament colors or filament types at certain layers on your prints. I did this with a 3D Benchy using Prusa Slicer to program a filament change and I changed from red to silver. Now, I did this on my Sobol SV01 3D printer, which is running Marlin firmware. This printer supports the M600 filament change G-code command. A lot of other 3D printers do as well, so this should work on those too. Now, Prusa previously had a filament swap G-code processing tool on their website, and you'd upload a G-code file, tell it which layers you wanted to swap on, and then download the modified file. And that was a little clunky, but it worked, and I've used it a few times in the past. But now this function has been moved into Prusa Slicer itself, so you no longer have to go through the Export, Upload, Tweak, Download sequence. Like the previous tool, you can add as many swaps as you like, but now it's a lot easier to do. Here, let me show you. Here we are in Prusa Slicer. If you're not yet using Prusa Slicer, give it a try. It's free, and I've got a video about how to get started with it linked in the description. Now, that video shows you how to set it up to work with an Ender 3 or Ender 3 Pro, but the basics apply to most FDM 3D printers. Probably the most important thing you'll need to know in order to set it up to work with your printer is the size of your printer's build volume. So to get started, we'll need to add and slice a model. I'll load up another Benchy. There. Now, before we can select the layer on which we want to pause and swap filament, we need to uh, have layers. And we don't have those yet, and for that we need to slice the file. But before we slice this into layers, it needs to be said that this filament swap process seems to assume that all the filament we're going to use prints at the same temperature. So before slicing, it's a good idea to make sure you can find a temperature that's compatible with all the filament you're going to be using. Then either select a filament profile that already prints in that temperature range, or temporarily modify the values for the currently selected filament profile. So with that out of the way, let's click the Slice Now button to slice the file. As usual, when we do that, Prusa Slicer switches from the Editor view to the Preview view, and that shows us the layers. See that big orange slider between the Preview and the Settings panel? It's got a half circle at the top and a half circle at the bottom. If you slide the top half circle down or the bottom half circle up, you can step through the layers that are going to be printed. It's kind of cool. You can see the infill pattern and all that. Anyway, as you're adjusting that, you see that orange circle with the plus in it? That plus is what you use to add a filament swap. So what I want to do is change from my red filament to my silver filament right about here. So I'll click that circle. And when I do that, you'll notice that the plus changed to an X. That means if I click there again, it will remove that filament swap. Now I don't know if there's a limit to how many filament swaps you can add, as a test, I added 25 of them and got tired of clicking, so you can add at least that many. If you decide you've just gone crazy with it and you want to wipe out all those filament swaps and start over, click that little orange rewind icon down there at the bottom of the slider. Now let's put that one swap back in at about layer 20. There. So now that we've got the filament swap where we want it, we need to re-slice the file. So click Slice Now and in a few seconds you'll have a file ready to export or send to your printer. One nice thing that Prusa Slicer does here is that in addition to showing you the total print time, it also shows you the print times for each color. Now, since you do have to be present to change the filament, it's nice to know that you need to be near the printer around the 9 minute mark so you can do this filament swap. Okay, so since I have a Raspberry Pi running Octoprint connected to the SV01 and I've told the Prusa Slicer how to talk to it over the network, I can send this G-code file directly over to it with the Send G-code button. So I'll click that and I'm going to change the name to Two Color Benchy. I want this to start printing as soon as the file is sent, so I'll make sure this checkbox is checked. Then I'll click OK, and off it goes. The printer homes the axes and then starts to heat the bed and the nozzle as it gets ready to print. Now I want the first part of the Benchy, the bottom part, to be red, so I've already got some red Hatchbox PLA loaded on the printer. 
And around the 9 or 10 minute mark, the printer is going to automatically pause the print and home the X and Y axes so the nozzle is right at the corner of the bed. Once it's done that, it automatically unloads the red filament and then prompts me to load the next color. There's a fair bit of beeping involved as the printer tries to get your attention, and that beeping gets a little more intense the longer you wait. So we need to get that first color off the printer, which, if you're using the filament sensor, means you probably need to cut the blob off the end of the filament so it'll pass back out of the sensor, then rewind it all back on the spool and tuck the end into one of the holes around the rim of the spool, and finally get that spool off the printer. Then we need to get the next spool up on the holder, the filament threaded through the sensor, and down into the extruder. Anyway, it can take a few moments to get all that taken care of. If the printer thinks you're taking too long, it'll start to let the nozzle cool down. Now that may sound inconvenient, but it's actually a good thing. If you're not around to do the swap, you don't want the nozzle just sitting there cooking and stewing in its own juices. Now you'll see a prompt on the screen where the printer wants you to press the button to let it know that you got the filament loaded. And once you've done that, it'll start pushing filament through the nozzle to purge out the old color. The SV-01 actually dumps out a fair bit of filament to do the purge, which is fine, but you'll want to have some tweezers on hand, especially if you're doing a filament swap close to the bed like we are, because at layer 20, there's still not a whole lot of room between the nozzle and the bed, and you need to keep that filament from bunching up under there and making a mess. Once the printer is done purging the filament, it will ask you if you're ready to resume printing. So if it looks like you've got the new color coming out as it should, then tell it to resume. Otherwise, you can have it do another purge cycle. Now I went from red to silver on one cycle, and red is usually a tough act to follow when it comes to purging filament colors out of a nozzle. It tends to linger in the hot end and give the next color a tinge. But this came out okay, so we'll select resume, and the nozzle goes back to pick up where it left off on the print. And now the Benchy will be silver from this point on, so we'll just let it finish up. Yay, it's done printing, and the bed's cooled off, so I can just pluck the print right off the glass. And there we go, just like we wanted it. Now that you know how to program filament swaps in Prusa Slicer, you can have some fun with it. One super simple thing you can do with this technique is multicolor 3D printed signs. If you have an STL file with text that sticks up higher than the background of the sign, you can program a filament swap at the point where the sign background ends and the text begins, and that way the text will be a different color from the background. Well, it's about time to wrap this up. Thanks for making it all the way to the end, and thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss out on any cool 3D printing stuff. If you liked this episode, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. But either way, please share your thoughts in the comments. And if you like the content that I'm producing and you want to help out, check out the description for ways you can do that. Shopping using the Amazon affiliate link really helps no matter what you're buying, and heck, even just subscribing, is a great way to support the channel and help keep me making these videos for you. Well, with this ability to easily program filament swaps in Prusa Slicer, I'm going to go print something cool. You do the same, and I'll see you next time.